Until now, our discussion of the simple linear regression model has not included a distributional assumption. Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about maximum likelihood estimation, and therefore we're going to need a distributional assumption. Uh, the reason why this distributional assumption it, it becomes important is so that later we can make inference and do hypothesis test and confidence interval estimation based off of the maximum likelihood estimators. All right, let me go ahead and write this down. Distribution assumption is made for inferences of hypothesis test and confidence interval estimation. All right, so the assumption that we're going to make, we are going to assume that our error terms, epsilon sub i, are i, i, d, normal with mean zero and standard deviation sigma squared. Okay, and just as a reminder, what is IID? IID is independent and identically distributed. All right, and remember why i equals beta naught plus beta one x i plus epsilon sub i. So if epsilon is normally distributed and all of this in the front is basically like a constant and it's not, uh, it, it's non-random, right? Remember we assume that x i's are non-random. Then it follows that y i is also i i d normally distributed and its mean will be beta 0 plus beta 1 x i and its variance will be sigma squared. Okay, and that follows directly from the assumption that the error terms are normally distributed i i d. Okay, so given that the error terms are normally distributed, IID, we can write down the joint density function or the likelihood function. So let me go ahead and do that. The joint density function, which is the same thing as the likelihood function, equals the product from i equals 1 to n, and this is basically the normal distribution, so 1 over 2 pi, or the square root, which is the 1 half power, sigma, exp, negative 1 half, sigma squared, um, times, epsilon sub i minus the mean, which is zero, so I don't need to write it, squared, okay? And just in case you're not familiar with this notation, exp, this is basically e to the power of one over two sigma squared times e, or times epsilon sub i squared, All right? So exp is just a different notation for writing e to the power of, okay? All right, so now I can go ahead and uh, find this product, simplify this a little bit. So the outer piece doesn't involve i, this here doesn't involve i, so when I take the product of it, I'm gonna have one over two pi n times, so n um, to the n over div divided by two power, and then sigma to the n power, okay, exp, and this will basically become a sum up here the sum, okay, using our properties of exponents. All right, so that's my mic maximum likelihood function, uh, and I can plug in what is e sub i, right? Remember up top here we have, uh, this, is, this is our 
a simple linear regression formula or equation. So if I were to solve this for E sub i, basically all this material here gets subtracted from both sides of the equation. And we're left with this equals, let me scroll down a little bit, 1 over Two pi to the n divided by two power times sigma to the nth power exp negative one over two sigma squared times the sum from i equals one to n of y i minus beta zero minus beta one x i squared. Okay. All right. So now, if I want to, so this is the likelihood function. If I want to maximize this likelihood equation here, since this has a negative exponent, maximizing, maximizing L, or the likelihood, is the same thing as minimizing the exponential part of L. So this part here. It's the same thing as minimizing the exponential part of L, right? Because of the, uh, the fact that this is to the negative power, right? So um, let me go ahead and write this down. So basically what we would want to do is we'd want to take the partial derivative with regards to beta naught of this, uh, well, this front piece here doesn't involve, this piece here doesn't involve beta, so I don't need to worry about it. I could basically, when I minimize, I can just drop it off. So I have i equals one to n of y i minus beta naught minus beta one times x i squared, right? And I would do the same thing, find the partial derivative with respect to beta one of this exact same sum. Okay, and solve. And that would be my maximum likelihood um, estimators when I solve these two uh, equations, right? Well, it turns out that that is exactly the same thing that we did when we found the uh, least squares estimators. Notice that these are the um, residuals, right? So this is the same thing as what we did when we calculated our least squares estimators. So this is identical to the least squares criterion. All right, you can go back and review that video um, when we derived the least squares estimators and you'll see this exact same criteria. Okay, So um, it turns out that minimizing um, the, the residual sum of squares, which is what we did when we found the least squares uh, estimators, is exactly the same thing as maximizing the likelihood. Okay, so in other words, the maximum likelihood estimators of beta naught and beta one are exactly the same as the least squares estimators of beta naught and beta one. Now it's very important to remember though that the maximum likelihood estimators of beta naught and beta one, they use the normal assumption, right? So this is with the normality assumption, right? So if you do not have the normality assumption, then you can't go and say that least squares estimators are the same as the maximum likelihood estimators. That's not true, right? So this is not the maximum likelihood estimators without the normal assumption. So you do need that normal assumption um, and then you can realize that the maximum likelihood estimators are the same thing as the least squares estimators as long as you have that normality assumption.